rest of mankind, that's okay. It's in the Bible. Yeah. It's in the Bible. When they did all of these things to change the word of Allah, it's wickedness. So they were thrown out. It was, the land was given to them, yet the Lord God threw them out. Babylon. <laughs> for a hundred years or more. And then they came back. Because the Lord is not eternally punishing. They came back. And when they came back again, the same wickedness. Killing the prophets of Allah. Zachariah. Stabbed to death in the temple. John lost his head. And Jesus on the cross. And so now they are thrown out again. <laughs> and this time when they were thrown out of the holy land that Allah gave to them. Thrown out. Allah broke them up into bits and pieces. Broke them up into bits and pieces and scattered them all over the world. The Quran. And then Allah placed a ban on them that you cannot come back. Tabuli. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot come back. You can come back as a tourist, but you cannot come back to reclaim this land as your own. Until Until Gog and Magog are released. And then the Judeo the Judeo Christian friendship and alliance creates modern Western civilization. The Gog and Magog civilization. And they spread out in all directions. They take control of the world. And then you see them come back to the Holy Land. Hmm? So, yes, the Quran declares that the land was given to them. But the land was given to them conditionally. And when you violate that condition, you are thrown out. And a servant of Allah who follows the true religion of Abraham. And is righteous in conduct. He will eventually inherit the Holy Land. Question two was? I quite disagree with you when you say the uh, cloning of our fathers, brothers. No, 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 no. Uh, Before this, you ask a second no, question. No, no, I didn't, no, I cancelled oh, the question. You, you cancelled that question. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Yeah, you were saying about the cloning of our fathers, brothers. Yeah. But I disagree with you because who's going to breathe life into them? The cloning. Okay. okay. Thank you. The hadith is that the jinn, the jinn, the jinn, are, we are created from clay. Hmm? The angels are created from light. And the jinn are created from fire. Not this fire with which you cook. The jinn are invisible beings, you can't see them. The angels are invisible beings, you can't see them. But can an angel, can an angel take human form? I, I mean apart from your wife. <laughs> can an angel take human form? Yes. yes. Angel Gabriel. Jibrail al Islam came as a human being. The man with white clothes, black hair, and so on, came and sat down in the masjid in front of all of us. Okay? Can a jinn take human form? Yes. Satan, Iblis, came as an old man with a walking stick. Remember? When the Quraysh were sitting, discussing what to do with Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And so an angel can take human form, a jinn can take human form. What Prophet Muhammad said, Allah's blessings be upon him, is that when Dajjal is released into the world, and he was released in the lifetime of the Prophet this book makes that clear. Hmm? Read the chapter on Dajjal. That they would be raised with Dajjal, jinn who are not Muslims, jinn who are kuffar, disbelievers, shayateen they are called. And Allah's messenger said that these jinn will yushabbihuna bil amwat. They will appear in the form of human beings who have died. Hmm? 
So it will not be your father who died, who is now resurrected, brought back to life. No. Your father is dead. He's in his grave. You can go and check him out in the grave. He's still there. No, it is not your father. It is the jinn who will appear in human form and in the form of your father same features same features same voice exactly the same voice but more than that with your father's memory things that only your father knows the jinn will speak and then the jinn will appear before the son or the brother and say ta'arifuni what happened? Don't you recognize me? I'm your papa. Hmm? In order to prepare the way, now this is my thinking, and only Allah doesn't make mistakes. In order to prepare mankind for this event which is to come, and which will appear to validate the Hindu claim that there is such a thing as reincarnation, and the Buddhist view also of reincarnation. Hmm? In order to prepare mankind for this, it appears to me that the scientific and technological revolution has moved in this direction of cloning. Because when cloning of human beings become commonplace, and that is something that is around the corner, then it would now be, appear to be something that is possible, scientifically possible not only do they have the my father's body brought back to life all that you needed to do was to bring the soul and the soul has not been brought back to the body and this is my father because he's saying things that only my father knows okay when that happens and it will appear to be a spectacular validation of the Hindu belief in reincarnation the Muslim will say to that fellow who says I'm your papa get away from me you Satan because he recognizes this is a Satan acting on behalf of Dajjal uh, any more questions tomorrow night yeah okay one last this uh, referring to my question just now this Antichrist that the Christians are referring to who are they actually referring to as Antichrist? Okay. The Christians have exactly the same belief that Muslims have. That an evil being was created and that evil being would be released into the world. That evil being would seek to impersonate the true Messiah and therefore we call him the false Messiah but they don't like to use the word Messiah they banish that word from their vocabulary the Christians prefer to use the Greek word for Messiah which is Christ hmm? kind of an allergic reaction to the word Messiah so they prefer the word Christ And so he's called the Antichrist. We call him the false Messiah, Al Masih al Dajjal. <coughs> Identical beliefs, the Christian view and the Muslim view. The only difference is that for some strange reason, Christian theology appears to have concluded and are not willing to re-examine the subject that the Antichrist is a Gentile medieval Christianity did long before Salman Rushdie oh is it Sir Salman Rushdie now? <laughs> long before Salman Rushdie picked up that dirty pen to write those dirty things they were doing it in Europe they wrote all kinds of nasty things about Prophet Muhammad and we never sent anyone to execute them no 
Islamic civilization never bothered to do that. To put a, a reward on the head to execute him. No. They did all kinds. They wrote all kinds of nasty things about Prophet Muhammad They even said that he was the Antichrist. Lots of Christians uh, held that view in the medieval age that Prophet Muhammad was the Antichrist. Why? Because the Antichrist is a Gentile and not a Jew. Until we can convince Christian scholarship that this is wrong. The Christian who today is opposed to the state of Israel. The Christian who today is extending support to the Palestinian people who are oppressed. Those Christians will not be able to recognize and interpret and understand events unfolding in the Holy Land to be that of the, the, the false messiah or the Antichrist until they can change this view of theirs that the Antichrist is a Gentile. No, he's not. That's false. The Antichrist is a Jew. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Abdullah from US in there. Uh, first of all, regarding the first question, there's a comment that uh, regarding the Arabs and the Israel, the Holy Land is not only for them, it's only for all Muslims. Masjid al-Aqsa is there and it means something to all Muslims. So they are not only Arabs. All Muslims are concerned. Regarding my question, is there any difference between the Catholic and the Protestants regarding how, they, how do they look to the end of the history and to the another one, another view of how do they look to the Messiah, his uh, crucifixion and his uh, return. Thank you very much. We have a problem in that the Protestant movement in Christianity is a European phenomenon. And the Catholic Church in Christianity is a European church. Have you ever met an African Pope? Huh? An African Pope. No? Tabule. Roman Catholicism is a, is a European phenomenon. It is a European church. And it was opposed to the Byzantine church, which was in Constantinople, which is not a European church. Which then is the Christian view? I made a distinction in my talk between the Judeo-Christian alliance, which created modern Western civilization, and I put a question mark behind it as to whether it is really Christian <laughs> and really Jew. Hmm? And I, dis I, I distinguish these Christians and these Jews from the others. And amongst the other Christians and the other Jews, we can now look to see what is a Christian view and what is a Jewish view. Okay? But the thing is that the media today is dominated by only the European view and so we in a state of complacency we believe that this is a Christian view once it's a Protestant view or Catholic view this is the Christian view but there are lots of Christians in the world who are not Europeans and there are lots of Christians in the world right here in Penang who would oppose the state of Israel for its oppression and who would stand up for truth and for right and for justice in the Holy Land. How do they look at the subject? You hardly ever hear their viewpoint. Hmm? 